Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and in this video I'm featuring a tidbit version of a project I had taught at the time of recording about a month and a half ago. Um, and so I wanted to make a faster version for you guys who already have a basic grasp of wire wrapping. So on that note, let's get started. To do this project, you can use any size and shape of stone, so long as it's not too much thicker than a quarter of an inch or a half of a centimeter. I'm using 18 gauge square para wire and half round 18 gauge para wire. I'm using a piece of scrap wire to measure the perimeter of our piece. And then I'm going to hold that up against the ruler and add about anywhere from 6 to 10 inches depending on how much ornamentation you would like. Also, I just want to mention all the tools and materials will be listed down in the video description below. And um, if you follow any of those links and purchase things, there's, that's very helpful to our company. So I really appreciate that, but it can at least point you in the right direction. So I've cut 12 inches of the 18 gauge half round in four 10 inch sections of the 18 gauge square. And I'm going to come in with my flat nose pliers and do a bend that's large enough that to be able to fit around the 18 gauge. And here you can see I have them stacked just side by side as neatly as I can manage. And I'm going to try to careful to keep everything nice and tidy where it needs to be. You can feel free to use a clamp um, here if you don't feel like you have the hand strength or to tape your wires together, but I'm just going to wrap with the flat side of the half round wire onto the 18 gauge square. You can kind of see I have the tail end out of the way and I'm just stacking them as close to side by side as what I can manage. Just very snug. The more snug and tight and clean you make your wraps right now, the the tidier it's going to end up being after you smush it. And you can do however many rotations as you would like. I usually do at least three, um, just because less than that and I feel like it might not hold together. But it you know, makes it a little bit more substantial. But in today's project, I am doing five wraps. And again, you just very carefully stack them. And it's poking up from the flat sides of the wire right now. That's completely normal. Um, what we're going to do is once we've done the number of wraps, I'm going to cut, well, before I cut, I'm going to smoosh it with smoosh some nylon gel pliers. You can see that flattens it down quite nicely and really holds everything together. And now I'm going to be coming in with my uh, wire snips and trimming. I want the tail lengths to be the same on both sides. You could trim it flush uh, onto the back side, you know, what's going to end up being the inside of the piece if you want it very clean, but I wanted to add some cute little curly cues with our tail wire here. So that's why I'm going to go ahead and leave them on, just tightening it up a little bit more, getting everything where it needs to be laying. And I'm going to do that three more times, or two more times, sorry, to a total of three wraps about an inch or so apart. And then using my round nose pliers, I'm just grabbing onto the half round wire and twisting it just enough so that I can get in there and create a bit of a spiral. So I twist it to be perpendicular to what it had been during the wrapping. So you can see I'm being very careful to make sure that my pliers don't slip and just making a nice little curly cue. And you can do this um, you could give yourself more wire, you could, you know, make a much more ornate curly cue, or like I had said before, you could just cut it flush. And then I'm going to smush it, make sure nothing's poking out. I just think that's a fun way to do a little, you know, eh, it's fun. <laughs> There's no right or wrong way to do this stuff. So just if you do the spirals and you don't like it, trim it off. <laughs> and then I'm doing that on both sides of each of the wraps. And making sure to smush it down because you really don't want to you know, have it snagging on stuff. So now from here you can take your stone and placing it curly Q side out. I'm just going to press and move around. There we go. That way it just follows the shape. Sorry, I didn't mean to go off camera. Follows the shape of the corner of the piece. If you're using a uh, a regularly st shaped stone like a 40 by 30 millimeter cab or just something that's like to a calibrated size you could use a mandrel but I just like 
winging it. <laughs> you get some really interesting things happening with your wire when you do that. And now you can see here this corner wasn't even that particularly neat, but that's okay. I'm going to come in with my round nose pliers and just do like a bit of a twist. Like I'm grabbing with one side of the pliers, one nose of the pliers on one side and the other on the other, and then like just wrenching my hand around. And so you can kind of see it makes that little squiggle design, but it also bent it out so that it provides a carriage for the bead on the back. I'm going to get in there. You could use your fingernail or a pocket knife or like a T-pin or something and just make a little bit of space. That way I have enough room to be able to fit my pliers in. The stone that I'm wrapping is turquoise, which is a much soft, like it's a, it's a pretty soft gemstone, you know, much softer than like quartz or, you know, hematite or something. So it can scratch easily. So you can see there, I'm just inserting my pliers, one nose on either side, bracing it with my thumb and then just twisting a bit. I didn't twist around nearly as much on the front as what I did on the back because I don't want to cover up too much of the stone. I just want enough of that wire poking in to be able to make sure that it's not going to pop out. Speaking of popping out, let's remove that stone and I'm just getting everything nice and flat. I'm using my work surface to smush the bottom down a little flatter because it had I, I didn't want too much space between the wire itself and the base of the stone. So I'm just sitting it and just pressing. And now I'm going to go through and I'm separating out individual wires, the ones that are closest to the front as well as the ones that are closest to the back. Whenever I'm doing a wrapping like this, I'll usually at least give myself three core wires to wrap with. That way I can have some go to the front, some go to the back, and I still have one doing the edging. But again, that's personal preference. You could do as few as two. I've snipped it to just whatever length I'd like, and then I'm gonna come down into a very organic open spiral and this is a stylistic point here the purpose of that that spiral though and this next one here that I'm doing is to again make sure that the stone isn't popping out I don't want any risk of this undrilled cabochon uh, just slipping out of its wrapping because as much as I say there's no right or wrong way to do something holding together over a long period of time is something that I consider like that's something that I want to do correctly. I want the piece to hold together. Um, so, but other than that, <laughs> okay, so I've done that on the front and the back coming through and I'm using some more of that half round wire to wrap around the shank of the four wires that are still protruding upward. I've done five rotations and I'm going to trim the tail with just like a like maybe two or three millimeters um, and then I'm going to tuck that tail in between kind of the uh, the these wires that are standing up as demonstrated. I hope you can kind of see what I'm doing there. And then once I've done that I'm going to use, this is a nice stick that I found, um, <laughs> I think it's like a quarter inch dowel that uh, I think I sharpened with a pencil into a or a pencil sharpener into a hair stick, but you could use a knitting needle, you could use a pen, you could use a proper wire wrapping mandrel, and I'm just going to be bending these wires around. And with there being four of them, I'm splitting it evenly, one off to either side, keeping them nice and parallel if I can manage it. And then I'm going to take these side wires that I've bent out into a V formation slant them in a little bit and then bring that around. I wanted to give a really nice wide bail on this one. And again, a lot of this is just stylistic choice. Okay. Straighten things up. And now I'm going to cross these tail wires from the bail around the front and then around the other way as well. So with that one, I tucked it off both both sets of wires until all four of them were to the left and then brought it around the right to the front side. I really like that kind of asymmetrical sweep. And now I'm just trimming off and then I'm going to make a few more decorative spirals. If you're using thinner than an 18 gauge, you may want to ground your wrapping uh, with some thinner wire, like get things bound together. But the 18 gauge, especially with the square, has enough materi material there that it, it holds up to even it getting, I have quite curly hair now and this held up to getting tangled in my hair. <laughs> so, um, 
And if you don't want it to tangle with anything, uh, make your coils a little tighter or we can start delving into the world of soldering. I'm splitting the bail wires a little bit wider. And I don't want y'all to be afraid either. I wear a lot of knit stuff during the winter and I typically don't have any problems with my wire wrapping tangling into like knitwear or hair or anything like that. But if you're a also have curly hair, you, you think you can empathize with the <laughs> sometimes your hair just eats stuff. But now on these back wires, I'm just trimming it around, bringing it and tucking that in nice and tight trying to make sure there's no little openings. And then our fourth and final wire, I'm just gonna make a nice little curly cue. And again, your own personal style and stylistic choices can really shine here. And that is how it has come out, you guys. I am pretty pleased with that. Hey y'all, thanks so much for hanging out with me during this video. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas, please leave them down below. Also, there should be something popping up where you can subscribe, you can check out my blog, and you can watch the full length version of this tutorial, or watch something else by me, so that'd be pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> please check me out on Patreon if you would like to support the work of more free daily tutorials, as well as receive access to early release videos, behind the scenes footage, and all sorts of different things that we do here at Back to Earth Creations, as well as our weekly giveaways, fairy houses, and monthly craft crates. So, bye guys. <laughs> Happy crafting!